Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about some cinematic options you have in regards to cameras. So i got three things to show you. In particular, we're going to go over the rail system, the crane system, and also how to introduce some camera shake. So with that, let's start peeking at the first one. We want to go here and go ahead and do a place actors panel. So we have this up here the whole time and go to your cinematic option. Let's look at the rig rail first. Uh, I want to spend some time checking out these guys down here. So this is the, in case you're curious, what is this set we have here? This is the free Assetville package, Assetville town that you can get from the marketplace. It's just kind of fun, silly little low poly town that has tons of things you can look at and play around with. So I'd recommend grabbing it. It's just a nice little handy set to have for educational purposes for sure. So let's look down here at this guy hitting F to zoom in on him. And we're just going to, uh, work our camera work around these guys having a little chat so let's drop in a camera rig rail first so you bring in your rig rail and it looks like this now there's really only one thing you at first need to understand about how this system works we're not even going to talk about a camera yet let's just look at this asset of the rig rail so here it is selected here the rig rail and if you look at its details this is probably its most important parameter right here. Current position on rail. It goes from zero to one. If I drag across to one, it goes to the other side. This is actually the core of this entire asset is you can control the position of where this piece goes on this rail. Now in a little bit, we're gonna put a camera on here, but that's less important than understanding how this thing works. So we'll add the camera in a minute. So we got this rail system here and you'll say, hmm, that's pretty exciting. It's That's a short little stint there. Is there anything else I can do as far as the shape and how long it goes? Yes, glad you asked. So let's back up a little bit. And what you can do is there's at the moment two points. I have this point and I have this point. Now these purple things we'll get to in a minute. Those are tangent handles. Um, well, I guess I'll talk about it now. Um, so this point here and this point here define the rail at the moment, we can add more. And then these here are the tangent handles that go with this particular point. Let's pull that away a little bit so you can see a little better. So I'm gonna pull that there, push that over here. And then, so when I select this point, I have this tangent handle, which I can move. It's like a seesaw, right? If you've used after effects or any other spline based package you're probably pretty familiar with these so i'm going to change its direction a little bit and i can do the same with that one grab the handle here give a little s curve there and that's nice i've got a little bit more than a straight line here with my my rail system but what if you want even a little more complex which is highly likely unless you're just doing a slow automotive cinematic pass then maybe a straight rail will be enough but you know you may want to do something a little more tricky so let's just go over the extreme case i'm going to select this point and i want another point so i'm going to hold alt click and drag one of my points here and that's going to pull out another point so now i have three points this one this one and this one and all of those have their own tangent handles so i can make a little sharp turn here select this point Move it if I want. You probably don't want to. I just lifted it up. You probably, I mean, if you want to, go for it. You know, you can lift it up and have it follow a track, but it's a little weird in this case. So I'm going to move it over here. All right. So now I've made a little bit more complex of a track here. And you can make as many of these points as you want. If you want to get rid of one, just select it and delete it. So it's pretty straightforward there. So that's kind of the base of designing a rail and understanding that. You want it on this end, it's zero. You want it on this end, it's one. So then, now let's talk about adding a camera to that. You wanna use the camera here in the Place Actors tab. You don't wanna use a spawned camera, which you can do I'll, when I have a sequence in a minute, I'll show you that option. It breaks the parenting right now in 503 if you do that. So I don't know if that's a feature or a bug. So. For this to work, you're gonna to wanna to grab the Cine Camera Actor from your Place Actors panel. Again, not a spawned camera. So I'm gonna drop this in my scene and I'll just leave it here for a second. And I want this camera to follow and sit on this plate. So the way you do that is you just parent this camera onto this plate or you onto the rail. You can do that two ways. If you see them handy enough in the outliner, you can drag and drop the camera onto the 
camera rig rail. So let's see if I can visually see enough space here. Where's my rig rail? C A M. Oh, it's way up here. So it's kind of inconvenient, right? The as much as I like Assetville visually, it's just a big jumble of stuff in the outliner here, and I don't really want to go clean it up or anything. So I'll say I'll show you the other way. If if it was if you could see the rail and the camera, now I could use search and narrow it down, but if you just well here let me show you that while I talk about it so if I just filter out stuff with the word camera in it that is one way around this I suppose All right so here's my camera actor here's my rig rails so if I drag the camera onto rig rails that makes it now a child of rig rail so now this camera is attached to the plate based on the fact that I parented the camera to the rail so why isn't this sitting on the rail? Because when you set up a child parent relationship, it looks at your transform value to determine what is the relationship between the parent and the child based on these values. So if I zero this out, so hit the little thingy here. Now the camera is aligned perfectly with the pivot point of the plate and the pivot point of the camera. However, in this case, it's buried inside. So you can offset that if you'd like. So I'm gonna pull that up. I'm gonna turn off snapping. And I'm gonna pull that up a little bit. So, I mean, if you want, you can align the camera body to be sitting on this plate. You, you can really do whatever you want. But for me right now, this is where I'm tip of my lenses and my control. So I'm gonna have that be the reference on the plate here. And if you need, if, I, if I'm looking over here at these guys, Perhaps I want to pull it up just a little bit more, and then maybe I want to rotate, hit E, rotate a little bit. I can see my little preview going on over here. Uh, turn off snapping there as well. And again, if I want, I can, ooh, nice little twist there of the camera. Um, but I'm gonna eventually show you how the look at tracking works. But before I get to that, let's back up a little bit. Hold on, going a little too fast. Select the plate, back to the camera rail, right? So now watch the camera slide across the rail and it's stuck to it now because we set up that parent. So you'll notice the camera is not turning as the plate goes around the track. That is an option if you'd like. If you want it to be locked to the plate so that as the plate turns the corner, the camera goes with it, you just need to check this box here, lock orientation to rail. So when you click on that, now as I drag through my value here, notice how the camera, whatever whatever way your original offset was, it's going to keep that offset value and just follow the plate and its orientation. So that's totally up to you how you want it to work. Now back to the idea of what if I want to just look at these guys the whole time and how, as it's going down, what, what wins? Does the lock orientation to rail win or does the local camera look at tracking win? Well. I'll give you a tip ahead of time. It is the look at tracking, but let's set it up so you, in case you haven't seen that before. So I'm gonna select the camera. I'm going to go to look at tracking. I'm going to pick an actor that I wanna track. I'll pick the dude with the suspenders. And he is pose standing 26. And I wanna turn on look at tracking. And you'll see it's looking at his feet. That's just because if I pick this guy, notice his pivot is down here. Uh, I'm going to leave that there and I'll just adjust it with the camera. So in the camera, in the look at tracking settings, you have this relative offset. So I'm going to adjust that. I'm just dragging here, dragging a little bit more. Say I want it looking up from the ground. So it's like a uh, squirrel's point of view, I guess, in the shot. Now, because I've enabled look at tracking, I've set my offset. He's the target of my track. Now when I go back to this rail and I animate it, it's going to be looking at him the whole time. Look how cinematic this is getting. That is looking great. I'm not a DP. I'm just showing you how the tool works. So now in, uh, let's show how to do this in sequencer. It's really just a matter of keyframing this value. So let's do that. Let's, I'll be official here and make a new folder, call it cinematic. You've probably gotten here after seeing other videos, so you know how to use sequencer and all that. If not, I have a, other videos you can watch for that. Right click, animation, level sequence. And I'll, uh, I'll just call this cam stuff. 
double click to open it into the sequencer. Now, what we're animating here, we're not animating the camera, we're animating the rail. So you wanna have the rail selected, add a track, actor to sequence, rig rail. And notice, and a lot of other times when you add things in here, you'll see that there's some defaults here. And with the camera rig rail, we don't get any defaults. So how do we add that we want to key this value here, current position on rail? You could either click on the plus and say, here it is, camera position on rail. And that'll open up a track here so that you can set keys on that. Or let me delete that and go back here instead. Another way to do it is over here, if you see this little key with a plus, a little diamond, that means it is a parameter that you can also keyframe. So if I click on that, it opens up the track and it also puts your first key there. And if you turn on auto key, then the next time you set a key there, um, it, it, or set a value, it's gonna auto key there. So let's say this is a really slow, long default 150 frame shot and changing the current position on rail to one you could either change it here or over in the details. All right, so now I go back to the beginning. I hit play. And that value is animating from zero to one over that whole timeline. Now you don't have to be that linear if you don't want to. You could, you know, this is probably gonna make you nauseous, but I could go to frame 30, set the value to one, go to 60, set it back to zero. You know, I, I think y'all understand how animation works. So this is, uh, all right, so now if I pop back here and hit play, get ready. It's going to be a little little whack, but it shows you that you can you can even make it. Well, one thing that might be useful, say you set all this up and you think, oh, I wish the track actually went the other way. Well, you, you can do that. Let me delete all these keys. Go back to the first frame and set the first frame to a value of one, which puts the slider at the other end of the track. Set a key there and go to the other end and set it to zero. All right, so now it's now it's going the opposite way just because you're going from position one to position zero. So that's pretty much all you need to know about how to work with the camera rail. Again, you have all these points, make more by holding alt and dragging out. And you know what, for me personally, this thing really gets in the way. It's fine for the demo because it shows you what the camera sees. But I'll show you at the end if I remember how to turn this off. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna show you now. If you don't want this camera preview there, which generally I don't, you can go to hmm, hmm, this one, this one, this one, this one. This is one of those, I always forget which one it's in here because I usually am not in here often. I usually turn it off forever. So let's try project settings. Basically, you're looking for a parameter called camera preview. And it's not here, it's in the editor preferences. So go over to editor preferences and type camera preview. And if you don't want it on, turn this off. If you wanna make it smaller or bigger, you can leave it on, but then adjust the value here. So I'll leave it on for now, just cause it's kind of helping us see what we're looking at. But generally I would use a, uh, you know, I'd go up here to, sorry, I'd go to layouts and I'd do two panes side by side and then make one my camera, one my perspective view. But I only have one screen right now to show you this stuff. So we'll get by with what we have. Anyway, I think we're good with the rig rail. Let's now talk about the crane and how to set up for that. So I'm going to drag a crane into the scene. It, it by default is huge, which is fine. You know, pretend you're on this big budget set, right? So let's look at the controls we have for the crane. With the crane selected, we're gonna go over here, and it's not that much different than the rail. In a way, it's a little easier because you're not having to shape a track or anything. You have three main parameters you're looking at. You have this pitch, which is the up and down motion of the arm. So I'm adjusting the pitch by left click dragging through there. And th these are all, notice, they're all keyable, so we can do that in sequencer later. I'm just showing you now how it works. Then you have yaw. Yaw is the rotation in this axis around the base. And then crane arm length, you can probably figure out what that means. That means the length of the crane arm. And that is also a keyable value. So the other two things to look at are these two items, the lock mount pitch and lock mount yaw. So let's bring in a camera and set this up to see how those are affected. So I'm gonna bring in a, a different camera here. So I'll send a camera actor, I'll drag it nearby, close enough for the moment. 
because just like the other case, I need to uh, make this, I need to make the crane a parent of the camera. I'll show you now the other way that you can do this. If you right click on your camera, you can go to attach to and you can look for your crane. And here it is here. And if I select the crane, that shows me now here's the crane and this camera just got childed to the crane. So I'm going to select the camera. Notice again the discussion we had about why the camera didn't snap to it right away. It's because it's based on your transform. So I'm going to hit the 000 button and it's going to go right to the base of that crane. And in this case, that actually might be kind of cool. That just kind of hanging down there. But again, you can offset that however you want. Right? If I come here and I want to Z, you know, put a little closer to the tip whatever you want to do as long as you know here how to do it so let's talk about the other two check boxes on the crane what those are good for so i have lock mount pitch what is that well if you go to the pitch here and adjust it notice how if we're looking through the camera view notice how the camera is still looking straight of straight forward even though it's going higher in the air even actually i just made the whole thing turn inside out and over the back and it's still looking forward so if you were to set lock mount pitch to enabled what that is going to do is, coming back to the pitch here, where do we go? There we go. All right, so now notice the alignment of the camera is in line with the crane arm. So that's really a different look. If I uncheck this, notice it's still looking forward. If you want it to follow and as if it's locked solidly to the crane arm, as far as up and down goes, the pitch, you would check that box on and off. Totally up to you, whatever, you're, whatever you need this for. Similar for the yaw, if you recall, the yaw is the rotation, the swinging of the arm back and forth. Notice as I swing it, the view is still looking down the street. But as soon as I lock it to the yaw and adjust the yaw, then it's stuck to the tip of that crane and locked to it. And you can, they're not exclusive. You can turn them both on, both off, whatever you want here, as far as that goes. As far as using it in the sequencer, it's the same as we saw with the track. You would just add the, go to actor sequence, you would add the crane to your sequencer, and then you would choose which of those values that you want to animate, whether it's the pitch, the yaw, you know, so say I want to, you know, do a rotation of the yaw, so I add a key this way, it added it here, oops, I was at the end of the timeline, but that's fine, I'll go all the way back. To here then and just set a different value of oh that, that wasn't very much but it's a little bit you see a nice slow nice looking here that's a nice uh, slow crane move there but you know you can make it as complex as if you want you can also drop the arm again it's as whatever you want to do with it and let's see just for kicks while I'm right here Let's start with a high shot up here. So we'll set our yaw, uh, oh no, sorry, our pitch. We'll put a key on there. And then by the time we get to the end of the shot here, we'll go ahead and lower that down to the ground. And I have auto key on, so it just keyed. So it's doing a slight rotation and a slight drop for my very cinematic move. And again, you can put keys across the middle and do whatever you want here. So. That's pretty much how you use the crane as a cinematic tool. So that's two out of three. We did the rail and we did the crane. The camera shake is a little bit different. So these are just animating objects that you're creating a child parent relationship. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention was, remember I said uh, the warning against don't use a spawn camera, meaning don't create your camera here, right? And create a camera and then parent it to a rig rail or rig crane because when you leave this sequence it breaks the child relationship so this will no longer be parented to this or childed parented this will no longer be its parent if you leave the sequence and then come back to it later so it, it breaks probably because the camera doesn't really exist outside of the sequence and it doesn't remember that relationship so the moral of the story use this camera when you're using a rig rail or rig crane so item number three, camera shake. Let's go to the content browser. And for here, we need to make a blueprint. And don't be scared, blueprints are can be scary, but this is an easy one. So I'm gonna go to cinematics. I'm gonna right click in here, go to blueprint class. 
and down here I'm going to do a search for shake and you want this one here camera shake base so select a camera shake base and choose that you can name it cam shake is what I was trying to name before autosave kicked in cam shake and I'm going to double click it to open up the blueprint there's really not much to it except these detail values over here. So right now it says, by default, what's the root shake pattern? It's none. So right now there's this camera shake does not shake until I choose the drop down. And we'll start with Perlin noise. I'm going to point you to the manual for the rest of this in the documentation because it's just a bunch of settings. And, and the docs are actually really good on describing what the difference is between these. But I'll give you an actual demo here. So let's grab Perlin noise and it's going to give you a whole bunch of parameters that you can mess with. So we'll mess with them in a minute, but for now, let's just compile and save our camera shake blueprint. Okay. Let's now add another camera into our scene. So I'm going to grab another one here and pull it up here. Let's look at these guys. All right. So here's camera preview of our two guys. And let's go uh, to our sequencer. And I'm going to ditch these cameras that we already have here. because Just go kind of clean here, camera cuts and all. And back to the camera I just made, I'm going to add a track for our new camera. And wow, that is close and it's a little blurry. So even though that's not related to what we're looking at it kind of bothers me so I'm gonna to go to our uh, focus settings here down here and open that up and well I can actually kind of cheat here I'm gonna use the um, tracking for focus and I'm gonna to go to track it track actor and click on this guy there now he's nice and sharp alright that was a little side trip there just so he's in focus. Now back to the topic of a camera shake. If we want to add a camera shake, the blueprint onto this camera, really the easiest thing is to just click add a track, camera shake, and because we made the cam shake blueprint, it's right here. You just click it. And now you'll see that the camera shake has been added. Now my playhead was way down here. So that actually put the camera shake here. So if I hit play, you wouldn't see any camera shake because it's outside of my playhead. So I'm going to drag this all the way back here. And we'll fix this in a minute. But notice that it's only for, what's that, 30 frames. So if I hit play, you see a little bit of a camera shake. And then it stops. That's because the blueprint only has in it 30 frames of camera shake. So let's go fix that. Let's go back to Content Browser, open up the camera shake blueprint and I'm gonna go ahead and dock it next to my level here so that I, I'm gonna be in here a couple times now this interface looks a little bit different than it did a few minutes ago it's the same values here but this is what you get when you open a blueprint that's not a oh, full-fledged blueprint if it's just a bunch of data which this particular blueprint is if you if this bothers you and you want to see it the other way you can just click this open full blueprint editor and then it'll look like what we saw before. It makes no difference to the way it works. It's just for visuals, but just wanted to explain that to you. So let's look at uh, some of the settings we have. First, we'll talk about timing because that is what we talked about first. Duration is how long is the camera shake. Uh, what do we have? We have 150 frames, 30 frames a second. So let's put this at five. That should get us to the other end. Crazy math there. Blend in time and blend out time is, you know, is it, it's ramping into the camera shake before it, you know, doesn't just hit instantly like a step function. So this, we'll just stop there for now. So compile, see what the difference is, go to the sequencer. Now you'll notice this goes all the way to the end of our 150 and turn on looping here and do that again. All right, so now I have a little subtle camera shake, a Perlin noise camera shake. And let's just very quickly show you a couple other settings here and then we'll be done with our three camera tricks for today. You have a location and rotation that you can modify. And let's look at the multiplier for uh, the 
amplitude and frequency. So amplitude is how much is the shake. So let's bump that by 10, right? So 10 times as much shake. Come back here, hit play. Now that's 10 times as much shake, but it's still kind of slow. I guess slow is relative, but if I want it a little quicker of a shake, that would be your frequency. So let's bump that by 10. Compile and save, come back here, hit play. Oy, that's getting a little crazy, but that's what we can control here. You can also, if you want, uh, do a similar thing with the rotation, and you can set these in particular. But let's look at this FOV. That's another one that's a little kind of on the wacky side. Amplitude of one means you're not moving your FOV at all, but let's just to push the limits and see what we get. Let's do amplitude and frequency at the same time. Well, maybe not frequency. And we still have location. This is just going to get kind of nutty, but just so you can see what you can do. So amplitude, compile, save, and hit play. So notice you really see it more if you're looking back out here at the building. They're so close you kind of don't notice, but your field of view is coming uh, toward and away from you here. So you have lots of control uh, with camera shake. Now that was just using the Perlin. So let's break away for just a second to the dock so you can see uh, what those look like. So this is, um, I'll put a link in the description, but this is the uh, effectively the Perlin noise. It's just a little more random of a kind of noise. And if I go to sinusoidal, which was another option, this is a very cyclical kind of wave that you can do. A sequence shake, the next one here, allows you to get in there and keyframe whatever you want for uh, hand. If you want even more control, uh, you can set your own keys. And then a composite option here lets you mix and match all of those together. So you can kind of layer those and get a look that you want out of that. So that is the documents as far as that goes and back out to here. So in quick summary, we covered the crane, the rail, and also added a little bit of shake. Speaking of cinematics and amazing camera work, check out this short live action camera work by my son Dexter. It's amazing. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. That's it for now. See ya.